Pope Urban, Urban Reviews. I should say item reviews. Goal Zero. This is a fucking awesome power bank. It lasts a very long time. It's a bit sizey. So most people will think, oh, it's just a bit bigger than a normal telephone. But no, most, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say most, but you'll get a lot of power banks that are about uh, 30% this volume. Yeah, that they'll actually probably more less uh, probably 20 or 25 percent this volume they're probably a third or a fourth of this and up to there and there so like that uh, so this is chunky comparable to most power banks but it's not oh so chunky it's unbearable it's not an amplifier or anything it's just a bit bigger than the normal phone i'd put a phone next to it but uh, and I tell you what, this thing, you'll get a lot of charge out of it for your mobile phone and a torch. It's got, as you can see there, two outputs. Fuck you guys, I've got to put the light on. There you go. You've got two outputs there. It's even got a handy torch. I think you hold it down and it turns on, yep. So it's not the best torch in the world, but it, it's a torch and it works, it's bright. So it's got an inbuilt torch and two power outputs and that is sufficient to get you three or four mobile phone chargers and at the same time about three or four torch chargers. And that goes a long way in any survival situation. And this is the best torch I've ever had for its size, uh, quickness of charging, and its well, its its release, uh, its energy expenditure, and ultimately its lumens. This is on the low setting. It's even got a f sorry, no, it's not. That was the high setting. So it's got got a flickering option. One of the best flickering things I've ever seen. And this is turned on bright. It illuminates an entire fucking room. And then when you focus, it is very, very bright. Like you're not seeing what I'm seeing here. This is extremely bright. Wide, forward. So easily lights the whole room. But if you put it on the low setting, that's the low setting. And I'll turn this camera off. That's better that still illuminates the whole room. On that setting, you get about two to four hours of light. So it's exceptionally good. It's exceptionally good. And I'm not, I don't usually uh, preach about items and nor will I ever. I'm in full agreement with uh, Hungerford, Rich Hungerford and his survival philosophy. We see eye to eye pretty much 100%. Obviously, we'll have our traits, we'll have our habits, our style, but generally speaking, I think Rich and I see eye to eye pretty much entirely. It's These things are just a bonus, but you've got the opportunity to have them. You'll take them with both hands. I'm not, I'm not saying to not have items. They're very helpful, but you can't be reliant on items. You are the tool. You are the survival expert. You are the ultimate survival tool. You are what will get you ahead, not your torch, not your power bank. And I think through most of Rich's courses, he emphasizes those pointers very, very emphatically. And I am in full agreement with him. And he will never tell you, no, 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 throw out your torch if you've got one. You're in a survival situation, throw out your knife. He'll probably, probably laugh at you. But he's got a principle that I really like and that I'm in full agreement with. You can't, your survival isn't dependent on these torches and these gimmicks. So I don't want you thinking that because I'm doing an item review, I'm like the other survivalists who do prolific item reviews and thus give you the impression survival is about what gear you have. No, 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 absolutely not. It's not about what gear you have. On the flip side, you should go prepared. You should have the right gear. You should have the right prep. Uh, you should have the right survival knowledge, you should have the right training, and you should have the right attitude, first and foremost. 
that sounds contrary to what I'm saying, but it's not. It's just to say that in a survival situation, there are going to be a lot of times you don't have these fucking things. And what are you going to do in the middle of a blown out survival situation when you've lost your gear? You've been mugged. You've been dropped in the middle of nowhere. You've been bashed. You've you've become unconscious because of dehydration and you've just disoriented and you've left something somewhere. What happens when worse situation occurs and you don't have your cute toys with you? You're fucked, aren't you? You don't know what to do. You don't know how to go straight to the rocks and start processing uh, sharp tools to procure food and make traps and go from there and make a fucking very quick and nifty hut and get some warmth and you know, making bowls out of uh, felled logs, you know, burning coals and all that, and, make, and carving out a fucking bowl, uh, processing water, it, one thing to another. See, that's survival knowledge. That's you, the training. And I don't want people thinking I'm going to start making these videos about item reviews as if, yeah, yeah, yeah that's just survival. You know, you've got a torch and a fucking power bank. But at the same time, it's a fucking awesome torch and power bank. I have got it, haven't I? So, on one hand, be prepared. Get the best gear. But don't go, don't focus on it. Don't focus on your gear. Focus on your skills. Focus on you. Focus on your survival philosophy. Focus on readiness, survival readiness. Uh, that's survival. Not being gear dependent. Gear can't, look, take it from me. After 20 months of the most severe and wretched survival conditions, it's all been smooth sailing for me because of my hot, admittedly high expertise in the subject. I've got, <laughs> I would probably say 15 years of, uh, um, I, I do sort of neglect to mention that I've probably got about 15 years of on and off uh, survival experience, uh, probably more than that, but yeah, but no, about that. But in the last 20 months, we're talking about a full blown out survival expert, urban survival expert, riding the elements. And I've been able to to get whatever I needed, when I needed, in any conditions. Uh, rain, hail or shine, I've been able to live in a mansion, I've been able to put together an architectural experiment, and this is whilst I'm fucking homeless, no income, nothing, zilch. I've done it all. And this is just in this survival situation. So I've got no doubt whatsoever that in other survival situations, I'll be able to emulate my success, albeit with very different dynamics and a different uh, da different danger factors. Danger factors in homelessness and this sort of, in these dynamics is rather minimal, if any, at all. Uh, but the principles are the same. Whereas in a uh, breakdown, pandemics, civil wars, nuclear holocaust, etc., the danger factor is huge, which makes all the other factors, which are nonetheless universal for all survival situations, a bit harder. That's what I'm saying. So, but nonetheless, what I've done allows me to understand that fry pans come and go, <laughs> gas elements, gas cooktops, essential oil diffusers. I mean, look at my room now. There's all my gear, which I've procured in three days. A typical diffuser, which I love, essential oil to get me to sleep at night. Some coals, fire lighters, gas stove, clothes, sheets, this blow-up bed. My bag that I take everywhere with all my main gear that never leaves me. You know, water, this and that. And that's, I tell you, that's not survival. That just comes and goes. That's very helpful. It's definitely necessary. Uh, it's got to be procured at some stage or another, but I am the one that gets it, aren't I? It doesn't do it for me, if that makes sense. So, great torch. Great power bank. The fucking best. Get them. Have them. Be, have the best equipment you can have. You know, and, and don't nick them like I did. Pay for them. I'm homeless, fuck, fuckheads. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Look at me openly admit it. I fucking nicked them from Sydney. Um, and the best torch and fucking power bank ever. But go out and buy one. Uh, in a survival situation, those torches, though, that, that sort of equipment can be a lifesaver. See, that's where it sounds uh, contradictory. Uh, paradoxical. It is paradoxical. See, it is a lifesaver. It is excellent equipment. But you're not depending on that as your survival 
philosophy as your survival ethos, as you, the survival itself, the survivor itself. Uh, that shouldn't stop you from learning and training and honing your survival skills, especially urban survival skills. Um, urban survival skills are much, if you ask me, significantly broader, significantly more involved than wilderness survival. Uh, wilderness, people are intimidated by wilderness survival because, oh look, it's barren. There's trees, there's animals, there's this, there's that. How fuck? Absolutely not. In urban survival, you've got a factor dangerous humans. You've got a factor biological threats, chemical threats. Danger, dangerous animals exist in urban survival as well. Dogs. So in, th in that regard, dogs are more dangerous because they're more common in uh, suburbia than the wilderness. Uh, you've got transport you've got to look out for, which can be very dangerous. Uh, you've got war zones. Uh, you've got dangerous construction sites, dangerous structures, especially in a war zone. Uh, there are many things to factor in an urban situation that is much more involved than the wilderness. And at the same time, you've got more resources to contend with in an urban situation. You've got more opportunities. You've got more opportunity for, for survival if you know what you're doing and what you're looking at, which is why I'm specialising in this field, because I strongly believe that the prospect of human survival is greater by working with suburbs as opposed to working with the wilderness. Uh, because most human beings have lived in suburbia their entire life as opposed to the wilderness. Therefore, they're less prone to making silly decisions in an urban environment than a wilderness environment. At the same time, if you go out and train in the wilderness and you get fond of it, you will start to lose that, um, not coyness, but uh, that lack of experience, lack of automaticness that you get by your everyday experience of being a city liver, a city live, city person. That's why a lot of people, when they come from the country to the city, they're daunted. They're like, fuck, this is like an alien place to me. This is foreign. What the fuck is this shit? And same for people who go into the country. For me, I dabble in both. Both are the same to me. I've got expert expertise in both. I'm not daunted by either. Um, I'm less susceptible of making mistakes, interestingly, in the wilderness for some reason. Could be because my ancestors were hospitalers and they spent nearly half their fucking lives in forests walking to battles. Don't know. But um, in any case, I love the wilderness. Uh, so, oh, look at me. I even look like a French knight. Fuck. You want to know what a French knight looked like? This. Yeah, the French, the southern French were actually dark hair, dark eyes. They looked a lot like the Italians, the southern French. For the people from Marseille, Lyon, all, all those places. Fucking... They, they don't look very different to the Italians. But anyway, beside the point. Go out and get good fucking gear. Go out and get good gear, that's fucking hilarious. Go out and get, go out and get good equipment. Uh, be prepared, yes. But don't ever be under the impression that any video I'll make is tantamount to those, I don't want to say it, but Fruit Loops who, ha who are fucking raving mad about the new fucking S200 and the new... F351.692 and this and fuck you've got to get this GOM Pro and you've got to get this fucking Uncle Blair be hanging from the ceiling and oh, fuck off out of my face. Uh, that's not support. That's just ridiculous. So I don't want you putting me with that just because I make item reviews. This torch, pff, it's compact, light, discharge two to four hours and that's on the low setting but even the low setting as you can see is really bright. Uh, that fucking power bank, lifesaver, and if I'm correct, waterproof to some extent. When you've got that plastic thing over it that it comes with, which I don't have. After 18 months or whatever it's been. <laughs> um, yeah, great items. Definitely have them. But never, ever let those items substitute your survival tenacity, your survival ethos. You, the survivor.